Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing the various reasons for obeying God. And now that we've gone over all the best reasons for obeying God, it's time to tackle the worst, the reality of the afterlife. I say this reason is the worst, not because it's useless or because people don't respond to it. On the contrary, it seems like people respond to dangers and rewards a lot more often than they do to gratitude or love. I only say it's the worst because it's the fear of God, not the love of God, that's most often at the center of this reason. Now, establishing the reality of the afterlife needs to be done in two stages. First, proving that there is an afterlife. And secondly, proving that our actions in this life have their effect on our fate in the next. I'll spend the next few episodes on that first stage, dealing with a few different kinds of afterlife, to see if we can prove they exist. In this episode, we're going to ask the question, is there a great happiness waiting in the afterlife for people who want God's mercy? In short, is there a real heaven? I'm sorry to say that logic can only take us so far when it comes to learning about heaven, but we can at least establish that it exists based on what we already know about God. Here's how. We know that some people do a tremendous amount of good in their lives, doing their best to love others and follow God. We also know that many of those people suffer horribly, sometimes because of their attempts to do the right thing and follow God's will. However, we know from episode 17 that God's will is for us to become better, not worse, and being more hurt and more persecuted is the same thing as being worse. We know this because we get worse when we contract malaria or cancer, and if being hurt by a disease makes us worse, so does being hurt by our fellow man. Here's the equation we're left with. Following God's will is beneficial for us. Following God's will sometimes leads to persecution and death. Therefore, persecution and death are sometimes beneficial for us. However, it would be impossible for persecution and death to be beneficial for us if death was the end of our existence and there were no other life in which the persecution was over. Therefore, there must be an afterlife in which God protects the faithful and finishes the work that was begun here, a life in which following the will of God does benefit us directly. St. Paul says the same thing. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all men most to be pitied. 1 Corinthians 15.19 So we know that heaven exists and that people go there. But of course, that's not the whole equation. What happens to the people who absolutely refuse to cooperate with God's love? Hmm? Did it just get a little warmer in here? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.